hardy piece of work, I must say. Look at that head. It's more like an old salad. Um, so whoever figures can't be choosers. <clears throat> I know you're not one of my creation, but I beg of you some assistance. I'm looking for a certain Wurzel Gummidge. Ah. Thank you, Mr. Uh, oh, bless my soul. You probably haven't got a name, have you? Oh, we can't have that. Now then. I name this scarecrow Scarer Cabbage. And Scarer Cabbage, if you ever want a job, come and see me. I've got a good vacancy at Scatterbrook Farm. You're a hard working scarecrow. Oh, my Higgin twigs and straw. <laughs> Well, I'll be bombs with if I don't sit me down and have myself a bit of a rest. <laughs> yeah, it's oh, this makes rook scaring seem like taking an holiday, this does. My, 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 I'm Tally and Taffy Apples. Oi! I'm Tally! <laughs> you and Taffy Apples go together like sausages and cream cakes. Don't get round me that way, Russell Gummidge. Ah, oh, get on with you, Aunt Tally. You know you like you're in Collipman's. Like hearing nice things about yourself. That's a pretty bonnet you're wearing. In fact, that's the nicest, prettiest bonnet what I ever see, that is. Mm -hmm. So if you don't give me one of these daffy apples, I'll jump up and down on it. You do that, Wurzel Gummit, and I'll tell the fairy huh? to make you his assistant, passing the flaming torch. No, you wouldn't do that to old Wurzel, would you? <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what, Aunt Sally. Yeah, when, we, when we've done our day's work and collected our wages, how would you like me to take you down the village for a cup of tea and a slice of cake? Perhaps. Oh, then again, perhaps not. She'll feel different at tea time. Never known Aunt Sally when she couldn't handle a brace of chocolate cakes. All right. One for eating, one for throwing. Oh, ah! Is it? You comfortable, are you? Yes, thank you, sir. Yes, very comfy metal chair, this Good. Is. I employed you as a casual labourer, is that right? Yes, yeah, right, sir. Yes, that's what I is, sir. Casual labourer, right? Well, let's have a little less casual and a bit more labour. Otherwise, you will be out on your hero and that will go for your girlfriend as well. Do you understand, then? Move! I'm very suspicious about you, too. Oi! You ain't on the run, are you? On the run? Well, carrying this great, great barrel of coconuts? You must be amazed. <laughs> Body wants to. Anyway, you's breathing. My dear ignorant scarecrow, for your fermentation, what do you see me doing is fluttering my pretty eyelids. <laughs> what, what for are you flattening your eyelids at them for then? 
big and strong, and he's got a shiny head and a wax moustache and a caravan, and he's also a great. Great, is he? What's a great? Don't you know nothing from nothing? It's his title, the Great Orlando. It's the same as being Duke of Clarence, only better. And of course, whomever marries him becomes Lady Great Orlando. You can't marry him, he's a human. Why not? Because, because it'll come to no good, that's why not. <laughs> I wish the crow man was here, he could explain it better. Perhaps we should send for him, and then when he's explained to me why I shouldn't flutter my pretty eyelids at the great Orlando, although for the life of me, I don't see why I shouldn't. You can explain to him why you've pinched his wheelie thing. Yeah, well, yeah, well, perhaps you're right, perhaps I'll be, be, take all these here cookies out. Much great. Yeah, of course I could have done it myself, uh, but, but I strained me out, you see. Strong and silent. Why shouldn't he be strong and silent? That's how he earns his wages, isn't it? And talking about wages, Aunt Sally, what about that cup of tea and a slice of cake you and I was going to have? Very well. Well, meet me in front of the fortune teller's booth when the big hand on the church clock's like that and the little hand's like that. Half past twenty-two. Right on, Sally. I'll be there. Half past twenty-two, Aunt Sally. What about it, my man? Tea time. Excuse me, this poor man would like a penny for a cup of tea and a piece of bread and butter. I've just had my fortune told, and she said I'm going to marry a silent man with a shiny head and live off chocolates for the rest of my life. Shall we? Used to and might your answer, but with your fine clothes and your grand ways. Look, I'm asking you nice and polite. Is you a scarecrow? That's right, mate. Hmm. I've mashed me head up with salt and pepper. Why didn't you say so in the first place? Yeah. Did the crow man make you, Missy? Well, he didn't, he didn't. See, when my boss retired from dressmaking and he bought this here cottage, he brung me with him, didn't he? Did he? Of course he did. And he stuck me out here to be a scarecrow, cos he's taken up gardening, hasn't he? Has he? Well, of course he has. So I'm standing here like a spare tabby at the cat's wedding, when along come the crow man, don't he? Do he? Well, of course he does. And he says, stone me crows, girl. He says, you'll have to do better than that if you want to be a scarecrow. Then he does no more, but he brung me to life so he can learn me how to scare crows. So, here we are. 
What's that then? What's what then? What's this here? Oh, false of habit, I suppose. Because I'm a model. What's a model then? You know, what they stick in a shop window with a frock on. Ever so grand it was. Bond Street, would you believe? Up west. Have you been up west, Missy? I've always wanted to go up west. That's where the sun sets, isn't it? Yeah, I've often said to myself, many, many a time I've said, Wurzel, I'd like to go up west and see where the sun goes through the night time. But, do you know, Missy, I've, I've never catched up with it. No, I don't mean that west. I mean the other west. Oh, is there another one? I never know that. <laughs> you are funny. The other west is London. London, is it? Yeah, I heard of London. You know, they all stands around like you does, Missy. <laughs> I don't think much of it. You now make me laugh, you do. Uh, why is that, then? Because you're funny. Am I? Am I really? Of course you are. You make me laugh. Yeah, well... When you're done laughing, do you like cups of tea and slices of cake? Don't know, mate. I ain't never had none. Never had a cup of tea and a slice of cake? Slice of cake and cup of tea? No, me being a model, see? I've got to keep thin. Yeah, well, you ain't the muggle now, is ya? You? You're the scarecrow. So you come along with me, and, and I can give you all the cups of tea and slices of cake you can handle. You are kind. What's your name? Wurzel. Wurzel Gummit. Mine's Dolly. Dolly Clothes Pig. How do you do? How do you do? Oh, ain't they lovely? Do you know what I think, Wurzel? I think you and me's going to be best mates. <sighs> I must say, I do like to see a man with a proper appetite. Personally, I've only got the appetite of a little sparrow. In fact, my doctor said they don't know how I keep going. But then we ladies don't have to keep up our strength like what you gentlemen does. Oh, ain't it nice and worse? Come Can we have one of those cream cakes? One of them? You don't want no one of them, my dear. You want all of them. <laughs> hey! All right. Sit down. <laughs> well, well, well. Look what the cat's dragged in. Only class of person they bring into A-class establishments these days. Hey, you are, darling, close peg. You get those down here. Then we'll order some more. You ain't half good to me, Wurzel. <laughs> but why have I got more cakes than you? Hey, you haven't. You've got half. Same as me. Three for you, three for me. This ain't three, silly. This is four. And then there's two. Right. Ain't two and four same as three, then? Of course it ain't. Who ever told you that? That they're on Sally. Oh, knock her head off. She sounds like a right greedy guts. Here. There. Now we've got our feet. Ah, oh, my, my, my. You're yeah, not a nice Dolly Clothes Peg, and no mistake, Missy. You don't have to call me Dolly Clothes Peg, Wurzel. Huh? You can call me Dolly. Can I? Can I really? <laughs> Thanks very much, Dolly. <laughs> Here. Who is this Aunt Sally, anyway? That's my intended. That's her sitting over there with the bowler hat. But, Wurzel, hmm? if you and Aunt Sally's going to get married, why is she sitting over there with another geezer? <laughs> well, I, I suppose she's taking pity on him. What with him being a bit barmy and having no one to have his tea with. And she's really said she'd marry you? Oh, I've been in many a time. Because, thing is, Wurzel, if for any reason Aunt Sally don't want to marry you, well, there might be somebody what do. Ah. <laughs> Wurzel, why did your intended hit me in the bush with the strawberry cream cake? Well, I suppose she's taking a fancy to you. Now it's your turn to return the collectman. What? You mean throw one back? Yeah. Hey, I have a go with that one. So many things so cunning. You didn't have to be kicked. Look at that common person with cream. Oh! <laughs> 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 Here's another one. Thank you, Wurzel. There you go. Yeah, 
she was too, though I say it that shouldn't. <laughs> Where am I going to get a genuine aunt Sally at a price I could afford to pay? They're all in the antique shops now. Well, I do happen to know that the tattoo man has one in this club. A genuine aunt Sally? Not a genuine one, no. Quite common, really, but good enough to chuck wooden balls. Chuck old Wurzel on the compom, compom, um. Go on, hop it, before he really does chuck you on the bonfire. Yes, right away, Mr. Ronis. Excuse me, Aunt Sally. That's the Aunt Sally I was telling you about, Mr. Fairground owner, sir. Mm. 
Yeah. Very good. Good turn. Quite possible, yes. Where's your head? Row dummage of all scarecrows. Fancy meeting you here. Fancy meeting you, Your Imagination. I was just coming back to you, Your Sermonship. It bring you your wheelie thing. You've left that too late, I'm afraid, Wurzel. Too late, Your Eminence. Does that mean you're going to chuck me on the comp... comp... Um... No, I'm not going to throw you on the compost heap. You deserve it. But I've got a little job for you to do in a little garden where a certain scarecrow has deserted a post. <laughs> That'll be Dolly Clothes, Peggy Remnants. <laughs> what a lovely scarecrow she is, and all. That well may be, Wurzel, but I didn't make her. Now, do you wish to say goodbye to uh, anyone before you start your new life? Yes, Your Remnants. Me Aunt Sally and Dolly Clothes, Peggy. Perhaps they'd like to come with me. Wurzel, Wurzel, one of them can't, and t'other one won't. Right, here we are, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, one genuine Aunt Sally. And she lovely and she pretty, all you've got to do is knock her head off, and we've got some lovely prizes. We call her Aunt Sally, you can call her what you like. Gather around over this way, sir, nice Aunt Sally over here. Here, pay your money, throw your balls. All you've got to do is knock her head off, sir. All you've got to do is knock her head off. Give us your money, sir, give us your money. Good man. Dolly clothes peg. Why for should Aunt Sally want to do a thing like that, Mr. Cromancer? Don't you know, Wurzel? Jealousy. Jealousy? What's jealousy, Your Eminence? She doesn't want Dolly clothes peg to have you. Don't want Dolly to have me. Here. Yeah, I can I can only mean one thing. Well, well begging your receptionist is part. If you don't want Dolly to have me. That means you must love me. So can I ask her to marry me, Mr. Cromander? What a lot you have to learn, Wurzel. She can only say no, Your Holiness. Very well, Wurzel. Go along. She probably will. <laughs> Mr. Cromancer. You can come with me, Wurzel. To that new job? Not this time, Wurzel. Back to Scatterbrook. Hey? Eh? <laughs> 